good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to an- another exciting episode of LT Puga Gaming. This is going to be a test video, but if it ends up turning out to be good footage, I'm just testing out my mic and my headphones that I got. I got the Blue Yeti mic. Uh, I'm going to be testing it out here in Magic 2015. Just came out on Wednesday. Alright, let's get started. Start. Oh man, I love how Garak looks right there. It's just. Ooh, good Halloween costume. Good idea. Huh? Cost some money to do that, but. I'm just taking a look here and go to my settings. Earlier I was having issues, it was recording, and it didn't seem like it was recording in 1080p. But I think it's because the game wasn't set up to it now, but now as you can see here, I have it set up there. I was running another video earlier, and when I hit apply, it cut out completely. It, it, like, it crashed the program, but it didn't crash the program. It was really awkward, because, because it kept the settings. When I went back into the game, it kept the 1080, the 1920 by 1080, it kept it. So, but everything seems to be good. Um, let me check the volume here. I'm going to lower this song. I don't want the music to be. much over me. Alright. So now we can go back. Um, yeah, just really excited. Uh, seems like everything's going to be working right here. Let's just do a quick game. Single player. Take you guys through the tutorial since this is a test video. I already done them all, but I guess I should could take you guys to the first one. The first quest is the basics: playing land, summoning creatures, and combat. If you guys never played this game before, this this is actually really good to learn how to play the game. Um, just to learn to play the actual physical card game itself because it's played exactly the same way. Just but do keep in mind that this is a video game and I'm pretty sure there's some bugs just like I noticed some in the previous versions of this like 2014 and 2013 and 2012 there was bugs then but it's a computer game and it's kind of you can't avoid it all right here let's get started uh, you are a planeswalker. Planeswalkers draw mana from lands they visited and use that energy to summon creatures to defeat their rivals. In the magic game, you'll use your creatures to attack your opponent or to block an attack. That is true. Basics of the basics. I'm taking you through that right now. Welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers. Powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. Yeah, there is a lady or young lady, sounds like a really young lady here, that she takes you through the tutorial. She could get a little obnoxious, but it is what it is, like I've always said. It's kind of the thing I say, is it is what it is, and if you can't do anything about it now, then why worry about it, right? All right, getting off this topic, go back to the game. To continue here. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down. Yes, from she is very right. But when you're playing one on one, just you against someone else, it you both start off with 20 life, and in order to win, you have to bring them to zero, bring their life, their 20 to zero, or negative because you can go negative but that really doesn't matter unless you get into really specifics of magic but to start off with that is the whole gist of it is just to bring that 20 down to zero uh there is another way to kill your opponent there is actually multiple ways to kill your opponent but the the most common one is obviously bring the life down to zero or there's a thing called uh infect 
where if your opponent has 10 infect counters on them, they will die. They die. Just bottom line, they die. They, they won't do anything. They just die. They lose the game even, they ha- even if they had 20 life or more. Just the way it is. Okay, let's hit continue here. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. Your library. That is true. Let's see. It's pointing it here. I think I recorded this so you can't see the mouse. So it's right here on my left hand side. My right hand side, I mean. It's your library, the stack of cards you see there. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. Yes, that is true. You, in a friendly game, against one-on-one, -on -one, or actually it doesn't matter, just a friendly game in general, it doesn't matter if it's multiple or whatever. Usually, if you have the mulligan the first, if you mulligan and that's your first mulligan, we do what is called the friendly mulligan. Um, I believe the game does that too, so I think it is a true magic rule. First mulligan is a friendly mulligan, so you get to draw seven cards again if you need to mulligan once. But if you mulligan again after that, your second time, you will go down to, you will be drawing six cards instead of seven. And it goes lower from there. You mulligan again, you know, five, four, yeah. Pretty much, if once you're down to six, you need to just stick to six to what you got. Because after that, there's pretty much not a good percentage of a chance, chance that you are going to win this game or even get anywhere in the game. Okay, it says here to zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. Zoom back out. To begin playing magic, you must complete a series of quests. Each quest will be related to one of the five colors of magic. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. That is true. During these tutorials, she is going to take you through every color, and she's going to say, this is the focus usually on green. And yes, green is specializes in large and powerful creatures and mana ramping, which is to get as much of your mana lands out into the battlefield within three turns to have like five, six mana. Every turn, you're only allowed to put down one mana. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn, you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Play a land now. Like she said, you're only allowed to play one land per turn unless you have some special abilities usually that come along later on during your turn as the game goes on. That allows you to play more than that, but as an official rule, just one land per turn to start off with. Since you don't Go. have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. And we were past, usually first turn, that's how it goes, unless you built your deck to be otherwise. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. It's pretty much the same thing for your opponent, he does the same thing as you, he now, play one land. He cast a spell. Now, because he does have something in his deck that he drew in his hand to pay, that costs him only one mana, he will play that. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. 
toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned sideways. Yep, each time you use any type of ability, it will say in the card that symbol you see right there in the middle of those two cards that it involves it to be tapped. And once you tap that creature or artifact or enchantment, whichever card it could be, it remains tapped till your next turn where everything untaps at the beginning of your upkeep. And since he uses your land, your land may not specifically have that symbol, it's just general knowledge that you know is to use your land, you have to tap it. Mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. That is true. As you can see there, it's, it's indicating it costs two forests and two of any other type of land, mana, to cast this creature. So if you have, you're going to need two forests, so you have two forests and then you happen to have a swamp and an island, you could use all four of those as long as you have two forests to cast this creature. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. Yes, that's true. Uh, when a creature comes out into a battlefield, when you cast a creature and it resolves and it's on the battlefield, unless it indicates otherwise, it has summoning sickness. Which is, as you can see here on his card there, this creature, it has a little haze thing happening over it. This is how the video game is indicating it. He has summoning sickness. When you play the physical card game, it's just, you just know who has summoning sickness because you're paying attention, obviously, to who's coming out and what creature's coming out and which ones have been on the battlefield. You just happen to know which ones they are. Uh, usually what I would try to do is I would not exactly tap my card. I will put it like at an angle. Just not exactly tap, just at an angle, just to let you know that it has so many signals and it just came out into the battlefield. That's usually how I would indicate it, so that there are no complications and no questions from other players. Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land, so I played my second land, my first main step, and I'm going to play this creature, Colonian Tusker. He's a beast creature, he's a 3-3, three, three. he costs two forests to cast. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3, three, three. more than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Yes, he is, more than a match. And now since that is the only thing I can do, is just we're going to skip the combat phase, skip my next main phase, and go into my end step. Now, Crimson Mage will play a land now, and then attack us with the turn. Crazed Goblin. The Crazed Goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. Yes, just like she said, on that card itself it says it has to attack each turn if it's able to. So if it happened to be tapped before it went into combat, for some reason it was tapped it obviously any creature that is tapped already it cannot attack or block or use its abilities so if it was tapped for some reason before it went into combat it would not be attacking but it wasn't tapped so pretty it has to attack which works out good for me i have the bigger creature i will be blocking and i will kill his creature when a creature attacks it taps and moves forward now you have a chance to respond with creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a creature on the battlefield that will block very well. Yes, he will. 